Hello and welcome back to the channel and a video that I've been trying to do for quite some time now and I've attempted it three times and things have just changed and um, as you can see from the title it's a bit different to what we normally do um, but it's something I think may help you guys and may get across my sort of thought process uh, on the whole subject. So let's get into it and, uh, and talk about solar panels. So solar panels have always been sort of on my radar of, of something that would be a nice to have but something that we could never justify. Um, we're obviously renovating our house or doing it up um, and there's large costs with that. Now rewind 12 months ago um, I probably said no we're definitely not having solar panels. Um, and then things changed quite dramatically. Um, I'd already sort of prompted the idea and got a rough idea of what the pricing were for solar, um, but uh, it was just sort of out of our reach. Come this year, um, things started changing with the world energy crisis um, that you're probably all aware of, um, changed the thought process quite drastically. Um, and what I want to do with this video is kind of share my thought process of how I can probably justify solar panels uh, and a battery storage system now. Originally, we were just go, going to have um, solar panels and that's what I got a quote for, solar panels only. Then over time, as I've started doing more research and understanding the whole sort of solar PV systems, um, I realised that having just solar panels um, were not going to give us the return that we kind of want uh, on the investment that we're going to spend. So we needed to add a battery to that, um, some means of storage um, and the, the reason for that is obviously throughout the day you've got no problems with um, you know, get, uh, producing energy or producing electricity uh, on, a, on a nice day. Now, come sort of winter and you got dark nights, um, I was looking at our usage and our peak usage is generally between 5 and 7 p.m. Um, you know, come November time, October, November time, when the nights start uh, drawing in, we, we won't be producing as own electricity and we'll be buying it in. Um, so that's where the storage system comes in, that we can produce electricity during the day, we can use what we're producing, but we can also store some additional. Uh, and with that, then we can use the additional over the night, during the peak times, um, to to then you know be as near to off-grid, if you will, um, as possible. So to understand that, I then needed to look at a few factors of how we could probably make this work and that's what I want to show with, uh, share with you now um, and the kind of thought process and what figures I've used from where uh, to, to come up with the conclusion. So here goes. So we needed to understand what electricity we use, you know, the kilowatt hours um, and that was something we took from our electricity bill for the annual summary um, that we used last year um, and then we divided that over 12 um, and we came up with a figure of uh, 325 kilowatts. Now I'll put what I can see on my iPad on the screen as well so you can follow. So 325 kilowatts per month or kilowatt hours per month we was using. Now our current tariff, um, we're with Octopus Go um, and there's a reason we're with Octopus Go which I'll get onto a bit later um, that gives us, uh, it's a fixed uh, tariff and it gives us 15p per kilowatt throughout the day and then between the hours of half past midnight to half past four in the morning uh, that's reduced down to 5p a kilowatt. Now that's only up until August and um, so as we work through the pricing um, as you can see per year we, we were spending about or we are currently spending about £600 a year um, on, a, on our electricity um, and then after August that pretty much doubles to 34p a kilowatt. 
uh, from 15 so it, in fact it, it more than doubles and then the cheapened uh, rate overnight goes down to 7p a kilowatt now part of these sums I've not counted the cheaper rates because it's too hard to uh, sort of figure out uh, and the majority of our usage is obviously through the day so please ignore the hot water gas usage for the moment and I'll get onto that a bit later but when we was when I first got the quote, we had a quote for just solar panels. It were a pretty decent sized system, a six kilowatt system, um, and it were around you know eight nine thousand pound. The return on that wasn't bad, but it was still you know ten twelve years. Um, and as you what I've used to sort of come up with a rough conclusion of what I think it how it'll work is I base it on fifty percent of our usage being uh, solar and then 70% of our usage being solar as well. So I can see both. Um, I anticipate we're probably nearer the 70%, but I'm not sure. Um, but this gives me an idea of, you know, worst case and best case. So originally, before the prices were going up, um, we were looking at, you know, 30 year payback, which you, no one can justify. Um, now it's worth noting that these prices here is based on 15,000 pound. Um, so an outlay of that, which is roughly what a battery system would cost in a, a six kilowatt um, solar system. Now, it, again, you can do it cheaper, but what I'm pricing for here is, if you like, the best I can buy because I want it to last, I want it to be safe, um, and I want it all to be integrated. So I'm going, I'm getting prices for solar edge uh, products. So as you can see, um, the payback up until August for me this year, it, you couldn't justify it. You know. The, the solar panel system would be out of warranty um, and yeah, it just wouldn't be worthwhile. But then you start doubling your, your energy use, uh, sorry, your, your rate on your tariff to 34p a kilowatt, which you can see at the top. And we start bringing this down by half. Then I thought, well, what's it gonna be in the future? You know, we have these energy price caps that we're currently having to work with, um, but they're going up. You know, in we, we've been told we, I'm currently filming this in you know June 2022. In October, we know that's going up again. So I thought, well, maybe I'll look. I'll add another 10p on per kilowatt to so 45p per kilowatt. And as you can see, we've reduced it down to 11 year payback. And for me, that I, I sort of thought, well, it's still quite uh, high payback, but it's still within the warranty. It's still within sort of our. Um, justification and then I'm also not considering the sort of house price considering you know does does it add value to your house does it not add value but adds desirability um, so there's all these little things that that add up then as I'm delving into it um, I start to find that you can then if you've got a hot water tank you can use the immersion eater to heat your hot water so I had a look at our gas bill. We went on holiday for two weeks. During that two week period, for us just to heat our hot water cost 35 pound that month. And that's based on um, you know, my current rate. That's going up as well. Gas is going up, you know, it's not quite doubled, but it's gone up about 75%. So that's where this hot water gas usage comes in at 154 kilowatts uh, per month it's another contribution to your justification um, and that's had, you know, it, it, it's adding another sort of £135 a year saving to that uh, for an outlay of, I think the control was about £200. So it's really worth, you know, the control pays for itself in just over a year. Um, so I think based on, you know, just solar panels with a battery, you're talking around the 10 year mark for a payback at 70% usage. Now I've spoke to a couple of people over on Instagram that have got solar system, solar panel system and they're pretty up, up to speed on it all. And they're saying to me, um, and, I'm, and one gentleman, I'll, I'll pop his details down, details down below as well if you want to follow him over on Instagram. Uh, but he, really, he shares some really good stuff. Um, and I was talking to him last night. Now they have air conditioning and a hot tub which is not your sort of norm and a bit of a first world problem. And his yearly usage is looking to be about 60%. So 60% of his 
um, sorry, 60% of his energy usage will come from solar, um, solely, and he does have a battery, um, so, you know, the, these things to consider, but if you take away the air conditioning and you take away the hot tub, you could probably push that 60% up to more 70%, I think, in my opinion. So with those figures that, you know, I've just shared there, um, that's not including any other consideration. So I think, is it 2030 or 2035, there'll be no more sort of fossil fueled cars uh, around there or diesel or petrol cars. And we'll start moving into electric cars. Now I've just took delivery of an electric car. Um, absolutely fantastic, but that's a different story. Um, and we do actually have a second car for my wife on order uh, that's gonna be full electric. And this is part of the justification. So part of my spreadsheet, I added in um, the whole electric vehicle situation. So I've added that into the these workings out and it's kind of drastically um, transformed what the justification is. Uh, and as you can see, we've, we've got the same sort of figures, you know, your house electricity, 325 kilowatts, uh, your gas, hot water, um, which kind of mirrors straight back from, from the other tab uh, that's just solely uh, that. But then when you start adding in that you're getting paid 15,000 miles for business use, um, and then you've got 5,000 personal miles or even more where you could, uh, where that's potentially free. Now, don't get me wrong, a car takes a long time to charge uh, at home. And yeah, I mean, you're talking 11 hours to charge it. So you're not probably gonna be able to fully charge your car unless you've got a huge solar panel system and battery system. Um, but you could still probably charge, you know, through an eight hour day, I reckon you can get 70 miles charge in your car. So if you're working from home or on a weekend, you just, you know, you're in the house all weekend, just leave your car on charge, trickle charging. So the idea with us having a second one is that with solar panels, we can be trickle charging my wife's car while she works part time. Um, so, and she works from home. So her car can just be left on charge. Um, and in essence, it's a zero fuel bill. So then with taking consideration of electric car, we start delving into the payback now. At my current tariff rate at 15p, which is up in a month or two months, I, at 70% of our usage coming from solar, we're down to six years. Now, I think with a car, we won't be able to utilise as much of the solar. So I, I'm swaying that we'll be nearer the, you know, the 50% the of our usage being from solar, but still 13 years worst case at my current tariff but then that's doubling you know we're going up to 34p a kilowatt as of august um which means that the payback at 50 percent is down to six years it's a no-brainer you know we this we the outlay is fifteen thousand pound if you say maybe give or take um but they just with energy prices being such an unknown and with fuel prices for cars being such an unknown you you end up you know you could be offsetting and money sat in the bank doesn't really earn any interest at the moment obviously interest rates have gone up to accommodate inflation but i don't think they're going to go up enough to offset the, the gas prices and there's all these considerations that i think the answer is to go for solar panels um, and that's what we're doing and they've been installed very soon uh, and I'm going to cover it in videos in the future, but I think that the sort of conclusion of this video is that if you are willing to accept change and willing to adopt and, and adapt to change is if you're considering an electric car or you have an electric car, it's very justifiable to, to have solar panels. If you're not and, you, and you're sticking with your petrol or diesel cars, you can justify the panels and you'll get a bit of life out of them in the end, um, but with the warranties, if you like. I mean, they can uh, work, but they are less efficient long-term in 15 years time. Um, so it, it's hard to say exactly, but what I want to do with this spreadsheet is kind of, I will eventually pop it down below on a link where you can access it and you can see for yourself what, what your usage is and, and what your tariff is and what it's going to as, as to whether you can justify it um, but for me considering many factors of 
money in the bank doesn't earn any interest. Um, fuel, fossil fuels, you know, petrol or diesel offset, the, the price is astronomical at the minute. Energy prices have gone through the roof astronomical at the minute. Potentially, we don't know where they're going to go, but I can't see them, you know, coming down too much. I think it's just going to be sort of an upward spiral. Um, then what is not factored into this is any appreciation on the house. Now, I don't think solar panels would add value. Um, what I do think is if you've got two houses identical side by side, you're going to pick the one with free electricity, surely. Surely. Yes, they're not that aesthetically pleasing, but I'm sure if you're watching this video, you're considering solar panels, so you don't mind the aesthetics. Um, and then there's also the, the likes of if you, you are a company car driver and you've got the option of an electric car, you've got the saving in benefit in kind, which could be, you know, two, 200 to 400 pound a month in savings um, that could pay for the, the, um, the solar panel. So yeah, so many factors, um, but my conclusion based on my rough estimated workings out is that solar panel with a battery system is the way to go and it will create us um, uh, less usage, better for the environment and ultimately cheaper and, and that's what we want and I think it's an investment worthwhile. So yeah, hopefully it's been a long-winded video um, and a lot of talking and I'm, I'm not one to talk but uh, I could seem to talk for quite a while on this subject because I've learned loads over the last few months of, um, of dealing with it. Um, so what to expect coming up so solar panels as i shoot this video now uh, i'm having the inverter and battery fitted next week um they're struggling for materials on solar panels at the moment so that's coming in the future so i'll share everything as we go and i'll share you know before afters uh, and i'll take you through the equipment that we're going for as well and may get the installer uh, on film to sort of talk you through a few bits but um, yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Please do drop any questions down below. I'm covering it over on Instagram as well, so please do follow on uh, the underscore DIY underscore journey on Instagram. Uh, and yeah, any questions, I'll answer the best I can. I'm not an expert, but from my workings out, I think it's justified and I think it's a, it's a winner, especially if you have an electric car. So thank you for watching. If it has been useful, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, and please do drop your comments down below. And if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe because uh, we've got a lot to cover on this uh, going forward. So, um, yeah, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.